ever, ever go after a wanted man and try to kill him, the Dunwalk will get you back. What's going on everybody? Nerd of the 90s here and I'm back and I'm here to end the Bro to Barrow Bellum and pretty much is this the final chapter of the movie? You know, it's not. And um all I can say is was this movie a lot of fun? Well yes, but I am a little disappointed about one thing though, but I'll get to that later on. So yeah, this movie is just mind blowing and I absolutely was on the edge of my seat throughout. Man, this movie was really heavy. And let's start off with John Wick Chapter 3, Parabellum, which meant is time for war. I It says what it's actually, why it's called Parabellum, though. So, yep. Directed once again by Chad, Chad Stalinsky, um, starring Keanu Reeves, Holly Berry, Lawrence Fishburne, Mark the Cascos, if I pronounced your name right, Asia Kate Dillon, Angelica Houston, Lance Reddick, and Ian McShane. Wow, quite the cast in the pre than the previous movies, though, without a doubt. So let's start here with the story. The story, it exactly picks up after John Wick Chapter 2. Uh, John Wick is on the run after pretty much just breaking the rules and killing off. Spoiler, if you haven't seen John Wick Chapter 2, but I'm going to say here, Santino D'Antonio and the hotel, and that's the rules in the hotel. You can't be killing people inside of the hotel, and that's the rules. If you break the rules, you are pretty much now um, excommunicado and on a contract for a lot of money, just like what that happened to John Wick. And yeah... To me, it was one crazy ride for John Wick. And believe it or not, he goes through so much in this movie. And I completely just had my mind blown everywhere. And I was at the edge of my seat, like, watching every action scene. And it was great. And, man, the story is pretty much John Wick on the run. And, you know, what he has to do. He has to have fine connections to see who would help him from his past. People that he has met throughout the past. And then also finds his ticket to pretty much at least find people to help him out. To at least get him out of the um, contract and get him out of the excommunicado. And with that, he's doing his best to do that too. So, And it's one wild riot. The story is without a doubt amazing. Um, once again, John Wick, uh, played by Keanu Reeves, um, was, is without a doubt, come on, man, there's nothing I can say. Keanu Reeves is John Wick, period. Here, he goes through a lot, and the way he fights this movie, and he goes through so much, was, without a doubt, the highlight of the movie, and Keanu Reeves does deliver here, and I don't even know much about the stunts that he has done in the movie, I don't know if he's done 80%, 90%, he goes through a lot in this movie, and, man, he... He was freaking awesome. So, once again, Keanu Reeves playing John Wick. Another one. Um, for the new character, um, Sophia, played by Halle Berry. Oh, my God. People, fans were mad that she was casted about this. But you know what? I was like, you know what? I'm going to wait till she performs in this movie. And believe it or not, she is really good. And her two German shepherds fight, um, get, joining in on the gun tonics in the fight, helping pretty much John Wick with his journey, you know, to pretty much get out of the... Um, excommunicado in the in the high money contract it's it was really good she was really good and man the fight between um john wick her and her dogs going against many people who were, who get in the way and trying to get john wick some connections with other people was the real highlight and she without a doubt was awesome in this movie and her german shepherds delivered and i was like wow never in my life have i seen german shepherd join in on a gunfight even though you're not gonna be seeing them sh shooting guns but they fight, and wow, they're well-trained in this movie, and that was good. Um, so yeah, Holly Berry as uh, Sophia, without a doubt, was amazing. Um, as for the villains here, um, the Adjudicator, if I think it's called Adjudicator, if th that's all the way they call it. Um, she was really, let's just say, she's those type of villains that she's like, I command you to do this. You broke the rules. You have to forfeit out of the your situ out of your play home right now in less than seven days. If not, there will be severe consequences. How about this? Like, yeah, you may be high class, but do something about it. Like, I don't know. Like, grab a gun, shoot them back. But she was one of those type of people that, like, I command you to do this. I command you to do that. I command. I command. I command. But the real person who actually does actually help her out and who also joins in the fights 
uh, was Zero, uh, played by um, Mark DeSacos, and also Asia K. Dillon, who was the one who played the educator, though, even though she was pretty good as a villain, but even though she was a commander. Um, he, without a doubt, Zero was really, really well used in this movie, and man, he's just like a normal guy, you know, in, in a sushi place, you know, making sushi for customers, and also, while, while getting hired by the adju adjudicator, if I pronounced it right, um, he goes completely ballistic with his swords and his fighting, and wow, especially his men who's helping him, and even though they're very short men, he was without a doubt the real highlight of the movie, and he was actually quite the great hitman on the adjudicator side. Um, he was actually the real highlight, the adjudicator, even though she's commanding people to do this and do all her dirty work, and if you don't follow where her rules, she'll pretty much kill you, and that's what happens with a few people that I won't even spoil here too, so... The educator, she's okay, um, even though she just pretty much didn't do stuff herself, she just pretty much is the high class and commands people to do her dirty work, even though Zero does the one who does her dirty work too. Um, I thought, to me, without a doubt, uh, the villain and her hitman was absolutely the highlight of the movie, so it was great. As for the supporting cast, the uh, director, played by Angelica Houston, or Hudson, um, she, she was really good. She had short screen time though, but here, prompting John Wick with his situation being excommunicado and being wanted by a lot of people with the high level of his contract of him getting, having his, you know, like, a contract for him to kill him. She pretty much does, has a great screen time with him, and let's just say, um, she does enough for, uh, in this movie to pretty much help out John Wick with this situation. And without a doubt, she does have a backstory with uh, John Wick pretty much like, you know, being friends, enemies, and all that stuff. And yeah, she was she was okay. And then also, um, she wasn't that bad. And also, um, the Bowery King returning by um, Lawrence Fishbourne, he does have a little bit of short screen time. But even though he, this time here, he pretty much just gets... He has a short screen time, all thanks to the educator. But once again, Lawrence Fishburne does a fantastic job playing the Bowery King. Even though we're going to be seeing more of him um, soon enough for the next movie. Even though we'll, we'll get to later. Um, Winston, played by Ian McShane. Once again, he does deliver here. And then here, he has a much more bigger role in this movie. Because he was the one responsible of putting John Wick in excommunicado for breaking the rules at the hotel. And even though he had to pretty much just listen to the rules. If you do anything bad at the hotel, you... Are pretty much dead but here he gives John Wick the uh, chance to pretty much live for the next hour after that and yeah here he does have a bit of huge screen time though and his performance here was also really good but the one person who does have more screen time here in this movie is actually Charon played by Lance Reddick here I was like saying please let him do something freaking awesome in this movie and yes he does in the very final act Charon kicks ass in the final movie and to me it's it, he was quite the highlight of the movie, too, helping John Wick in the very end. And and to me, it was really cool, though. And, yeah, Lance Reddick uh, does redeem himself, too. So, yeah. Also, I don't want to spoil here other two characters here, though. You're going to know about a few characters, though. Um, Jerome Flynn from Game of Thrones does appear um, in this movie. And he plays Borella, if I do pronounce his name right. And then also um, another actor from who also comes out in... The Wonder Woman movie played the Elder. He his performance was really good, even though we are not going to be seeing the last of both these actors too. So I know for a fact that we're going to be seeing him in Chapter Four. So yeah, um, the action and the uh, gun tonics, it goes even huge in this one. Like the movie starts off with it, and immediately it you're injected to see how crazy it gets to but it doesn't go full gun tonics it also goes with knife knife tonics and stuff like that we see sword fighting knife throwing horse riding um uh, motorcycle riding and a lot of crazy stuff happens here and and i was like on the edge of my seat like like oh my god oh this is getting good and it's it gets even better so yeah, uh, without a doubt, the action and the gatonics of this movie is even huge and bigger in this one. So, without a doubt, yes, it's it's amazing. Um, the best moments of the movie, all I can say is this. The beginning, it starts off really strong, John Wick on the run, and while the excommunicado and his, con and his one hour completely goes up from... 
from pretty much like you know being a free man um after that he goes on a killing spree and everybody's pretty much after him and he does his best to at least survive as much as he can in order to find ways with other connections with former people that he has man in the past um and then also seeing that he goes through a lot especially when he's over there at Casablanca that's when the action immediately starts going even crazy. Even him and Holly Berry joining side by side um, with, um, or should I say Sophia, with the German Shepherds. That was also another highlight of the movie. And then when he goes back to New York and goes completely crazy and then also the sword fighting and everything like that. The action just goes even higher and higher. Like the action, I could, I wanted more and my god, they do it a lot in this movie. And, and it's amazing. So yeah, the best moments of the movie was whatever happened. It, it from the beginning, middle, and it just went completely crazy. So it was awesome. And then also the soundtrack of the movie, once again, it does make a comeback, especially the music when it goes dun, 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 dun. Oh, I, I, I was like, there's the music again. Oh, I missed it. And yeah, it does make a comeback, though. And for the composer, awesome. But let's start off. I'm going to put these both in. There is cons, and is this movie worth watching? I would say yes, it is worth watching. But the only thing I want to deduct a point here, though, because I, I really want to give it a higher score, though, because they pull off an Infinity War on this one. Let's just say there's going to be a part four. Seriously? A part four? When I was watching the ending of the movie, I was like, they pulled off an Infinity War, and now we're going to get ourselves an Endgame. Awesome. Awesome. And I was a little disappointed about that, because I thought this was actually the final chapter of the movie, but, with, but it's not the final chapter. We're going to get more. And... I was like a little disappointed. I was like, man, I thought this was actually the final chapter though. But now finding what Parabellum stands for means it, it time for war, something like that. Um, I was a little disappointed and I really thought this movie was going to be the ending of all. But looks like we're going to be watching John Wick fighting against the high class of the movie. And we're going to be pretty much seeing more of the characters like the Aju, Decatur, whatever their name is. We're going to be seeing more about the Elder we're going to be seeing more of maybe I'm a little disappointed too that some of the characters that John Wick let live which was Cassian and Ares they did not came came back to the movie even though Ruby Rose was actually casted in this movie and I was like oh she's in the movie she was not in this movie at all and I was a little disappointed and same thing with Cassian played by Common he didn't show up and I was like oh they're gonna help him out and no John Luciano he was not in this movie Ariella was not in this movie because I was like really he's not in here what and it really disappointed me, so that's that's all I have. I really do want to give this a 10 out of 10, but I can't. I am going to have to give it a 9 out of 10. It's an awesome movie. It does get a yes seal of approval, and believe it or not, I'm sort of, but, and, but kind of looking forward to Chapter 4. Hollywood, you're just getting greedy. And Chad Stalinsky, I don't know if you're coming back to do the fourth and maybe final film. Please make sure this movie does nail out of the park because if it does, I will give this movie a 10 out of 10 when chapter 4 does come out because if this is going to be a high stakes fight between John Wick and the uh, high class, what should I say, um, I wanted to go even bigger. So let's see what happens from there. Um, and also guys... You don't know about this, but I did look up on the internet that um, John Wick is going to be getting his own video game, though. And from the looks of it, it's not going to be taking place in the exact modern days. But it's going to go back to the past of how John Wick became the Baba Yaga and also how he became a hitman. And I'm really looking forward to it, too. I haven't even actually checked who is going to be developing it, though. But I would love to see if Rockstar Games does do it because... Look at Max Payne 3. The game was absolutely amazing. And also, either Square Enix. Square Enix made a really good game with gun tonics and stuff like that. But it was a bit bland on Sleeping Dogs, the video game. But let's see. Rockstar, Square Enix, or maybe... I don't know. I don't trust EA lately. But I would love um, to see if maybe um, Warner Brothers or somebody out there can at least make this game. Or... I don't know, it, it, it needs to find like the right developer for them who are huge fans of the John Wick franchise and who are huge fans of like, you know, slow motion gunplay, even though we're going to have a little bit of Matrix stuff in there. So I would love to see that happen, though. And yeah, so 
let's see what happens from there. So without a doubt, guys, this is the end of my video. Um, I'm going to be doing... I don't know what I'm going to be doing next because Aladdin is coming out next week and I might do a uh, Aladdin animated movie review for that one and then also I'm going to be doing the Aladdin movie maybe Friday or Saturday because I have plans next weekend so let's see how it goes because this week is going to be quite the heavy one for me too. I'm going to be working overtime and yeah let's see how it all goes guys because it's going to be quite a tiring week for me though. And also, Game of Thrones is going to be ending tomorrow, so I can't wait. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to make sure if I'm going to make a full review of about this, because I did start watching the um, Game of Thrones in Season 7, so I'm going to have to get to know more about the lore if I watch like the full series. So, yeah. So, without a doubt, guys, I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Take care, everybody, and have a good night, and have a good day. Worth watching, but there is an endgame.